Well, Linton, uh, three in a row coming into this one. Uh, how does it feel, you know, kind of coming in on this big streak? Do you feel like you have a lot of momentum behind you? Yes, 100%. Um, obviously, coming back from three losses, you know, you definitely have to start thinking what's next. So, obviously, I went back, contemplated what to do, and I guess, you know, come back with three big wins, you know, so the momentum's on my side, and I'm ready for, you know, this next, this next fight to make another statement, because, you know, I want that gold. I know heavyweight's kind of a weird place when it comes to momentum. Over the years, we've seen some fighters have, you know, later career resurgences, and I know you're, you're 38 right now, but you're, you're looking better than ever, so what do you kind of attribute that to? Is there anything specific that you feel like has helped you turn that corner and be able to pile up these wins again? Um, the main thing is just being smart now. Um, I, I felt like when I was light heavyweight, I was always trying to cut the weight and st stay around 230. Um, and I felt like I was always overtraining because I'd go on a scale and maybe the number wasn't right. You know, maybe a little bit heavier today. And I'm like, well, put more weight on, maybe go for a run. But back then, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so, yeah, obviously, I don't have to do that as much now. So if I wake up and I know my body's hurting me a little bit too much, I may take the, the morning session off and hit the evening or I may take the whole day off and... That's really, really helped, um, considering being heavyweight. And Tyrell, is he a, a guy that you've trained with before? Because I think he spent a little bit of time at Sanford. Is he, is he somebody that you ever got rounds in with? Fortune, you mean? Uh, excuse me, yes. Yeah, Tyrell. Yeah, so um, yeah. before we fought, he came and helped me for the, I think it was, I can't remember now, I think it was um, Phil Davis fight. And we trained for like maybe a week, you know. Um, it wasn't more than, you know, me on my back, then his on top. If I escaped, would go back to that. That's the kind of training we did. Um, so we didn't really, I didn't really know too much of his, his style. Obviously, I watched his fights and stuff. Um, but I just believed in my own grappling. You know, I have the best grappling coach, G Jones, Greg Jones. And the, the kind of training he puts us through, man, it's be first and be last. If you're not, you're going to be on your back. And that's the way he's, dr he's drummed it into me for the last seven years. And I felt like that's what happened in that fight. Yeah. Whenever he did take me down, as soon as my bum hit the floor, reversal, you know. So um, I felt like, yeah, just, just working day in, day out, you know, it, it all, all ends up paying off. Yeah, that was obviously a big win for you. And you got Tim Johnson here, who's a guy that, that holds a win over him as yes. well. Um, what are your thoughts on him, a former UFC fighter, a guy that's, you know, fought some of the best in the world? And, Big opportunity for you as, as well coming up here. Yeah, um, exactly. I think he, he stands up to his name, The Bear. He's a big dude. Um, he comes in, um, comes to rush you and spoil you and throws big, heavy haymakers. So obviously I've got to be on my toes and counter punch him and take him down and drown him. You know, not, my style's not going to change. Everyone asks what I'm going to do. It, my, my fight style stays the same. It's can you stop it? And um, the record speaks for itself. It can't be stopped. It's hard to get win streaks in the heavyweight division, and you're on a pretty good one. This could be four in a row. Do you yes. feel like there's a, a, a title shot opportunity at stake here for you? It, it has to be. Scott Coker, where are you at? Can't see you, but it has to be. You know, what, what, more, what more can I do? You know? um, but again, we'll get to that when it comes. You know? um, Tim's first. I can't look past him. And then we'll decide what's next. Thank you. Hey, Linton, just one for me. There is over 22 million trees in your hometown of Milton Keynes. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing that. I was <laughs> curious Keynes. if uh, growing up, did you spend a considerable amount of time enjoying that nature of the different parks, rivers, woodlands? Um, as a kid, yeah, I used to climb the trees and stuff. Um, I'm from a place called Milton Keynes, which you, you named. Um, so, yeah, um, it's not very hot out there. So when it is, you know, warm, we like to go out, but as I was a kid, as a kid, I used to climb the trees quite a lot and, you know, play out and stuff. So, that's a, that's a fun fact you just told me. <laughs> What's up, Lyndon? Uh, we just spoke with Tyro. I just asked him this, so I got to ask you too. Yeah. Heading into that split decision, into the announcement of the decision, did you feel like you had done enough to secure that victory? Yeah, like to be honest, I, I felt like I won all three rounds. But when when they did do that, I thought they're gonna, my my friends, fuck me over. I really thought that. Um, they didn't. 
and I'm obviously grateful for that because I felt like I did win all three rounds. Um, even if they gave him one round for some reason, I felt like I dominated two, whatever it is. Um, there was never a point where I was on my back long enough than even five seconds, probably ten seconds. You know, so I wouldn't have seen how they would have scored him, you know, um, around considering a lot of the fight was on the ground. And you said on Instagram that commitment means staying loyal to what you said you was going to do long after the mood you set it in has left you. I thought that was a cool quote. How do you apply that uh, same mindset this deep into your career? Um, because you can't say you're going to do something and not deliver. You know, and I'm a firm believer. I say, if I say I'm going to do something, I like to be a man of my word and, and do it. And uh, just by chance, did you watch UFC London a couple weeks ago? And if you did, how did it feel to watch your uh, fellow Englishman secure four victories? And yeah. who are you most excited to watch? The future of Paddy, uh, Aspinall, Arnold Island. Who are you most excited to I'm see look, in the I'm looking forward to Aspinall. He's, he, he really did surprise me. I did not expect him to walk through um, Volkov, Volkov yep. like that. I did not. You know? But yeah, it was obviously great to see you know, the UK boys representing so, um, yeah, I think he's maybe even be the next world champion. I don't know if it's a bit too soon yet, but at some point I see him being a, being a champion. He's got the striking and he's got the grappling. We'll take a couple questions from the Zoom. Nathan, go ahead. Oh, so I didn't hear a word of that. I didn't hear nothing. He was, he was on mute or very low. I'm sorry, I'll try to speak Yeah, no worries. <laughs> wait, 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 they're too loud now, wait there. Okay. We'll, we'll, get, we'll, get it. we'll get you there. All right, I'm going to switch the question. No, no, that's good. You can, you, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. There we go, yep. The big Yes. Well, yes, it's an official name change. And uh, the big swarm came from now I'm heavyweight. It just made sense, you know, changing. Because I felt like when I was the swarm, Linton Vassell, at light heavyweight, I did what I could at light heavyweight. Moved to heavyweight, put on the sides a little bit. And it actually came from one of my coaches and friends, um, Greg Jones and Sean Soriano. I came into the gym once, and they were like, damn, you big, big swam, and that's, that's how it stayed. And now all the boys call me it, so it's um, an official, official name change. And I can't say I, 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 I love it, I love it, so it's a, it's a good name change, I think. Last question for you. I know that you're not over your team. Yes. Oof, that's a good, good question. Man, I might have to go for the revenge. I might have to go for the revenge. So that's, that's Modoski, yeah, that's Modoski. I can't, I can't let that lay. I can't let that lie. But, um, yeah, Fedor fight would be amazing, but I think the revenge, revenge would be much more sweeter. All right, a couple more here. Ike? How you doing? Excellent, man. Um, obviously, uh, right in my write-up, you are the longer ranger fighter. Uh, I think it's uh, a good chance that you can uh, get past him. Uh, not that no offense to him, but I think you have the momentum, and uh, I think you're hitting a new peak. Thank you. Career. Looking forward to the Bader Tech Congo fight in Paris. How do you? Uh, how do you see it's, it's a tough one, because we, we, obviously the way the first fight went, um, Bader was able to control him. So obviously for Bader to win, you know, obviously he'd have to take him down um, and try and control him again like that. But for Czech, we'd have to land his heavy, heavy punches and, and his knees. Um, again, Czech's my friend, so obviously it'd be nice to see my friend win the title. But it's, 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 a, it's a tough fight for both of them, to be honest. So um, the best man win. That, that's, that's my prediction. Next question, Raul. Hi, can you guys hear me? 
Yes, we can hear you. Um, yeah, well, from, from the mistakes I've made is don't rush, you know, um, the finishes will come. And again, not that he needs to, to learn that, but at least um, learn, learn your discipline, um, whether it be ground or, or striking, and try and make that the most, most dominant. And I feel like that's what I try to do. Um, I know my ground's unstoppable right now. And I believe in that as well. So I always try and make sure that, you know, I do enough in that. I don't try and stay away from that. But then I still try my boxing as well. But that's my best, best advice. You know, if there's something that you're good at, stay at that. And then make that, make that be your, your main weapon. Thank you so much. No worries. Next question will come from Polly. Polly. Can't really, can't really hear you. A little bit, maybe a little bit louder. Um, the Modoski fight. I'm going to say, because I felt like the loss to Ryan Bader, Phil Davis, I didn't really learn, you know, I, just, I took the losses. But once, once I had that third loss, I felt like that was a slap. That was a slap I needed to really be like, like Linton, what are you going to do? And um, that's what's made me, you know, be on a, a three-fight winning streak right now and dominating some of them fights as well. So, yeah, definitely the... Modoski fight, and I feel like that's why it's, to me, we need that, we need that rematch at some point in my career. 